magical treats taste great, but justice and equality taste better. To combat hate, all ad revenue from My HP Kitchen will be donated to trans and LGBTQ charities. Thank you for supporting The Kitchen and helping make the world a better place. Mischief managed. Hello witches, wizards and those who have just escaped from Azkaban, welcome back to my Harry Potter kitchen, the YouTube series where we're making our way through the Harry Potter books, making recipes for every item of food and drink that we find inside. If you missed last week's recipe where we served up some magical golden snitch lemon meringue pies, then check out the link down below in the description to catch up. And if you're new to the kitchen and you want to see some more Harry Potter inspired recipes, then hit that subscribe button and click on the notification bell so you get an alert every Magic Monday when there's a brand new recipe. There's plenty more on the way, so let's see what's next. You guessed it, we're heading back to chapter two of The Prisoner of Azkaban, Aunt Marge's big mistake, for another recipe from the dinner party. Things are just starting to wind down, but before things are over, we do see another recipe. Then Aunt Petunia made coffee. Coffee? This late? I guess the party's just about to begin. We're wrapping up the dinner party at Privet Drive with coffee and last year in the Chamber of Secrets we created our own home roasted coffee, a little Hogwarts house brew, so check out the video recipe for that, I'll leave the link down below because you can use that in today's recipe. But we're going to make this even more magical. I'm serving one of the Muggle world's most famous coffee drinks with a fusion of the Wizarding world's most famous drink to create the Butterbeer Frappuccino. It's super, super easy to make and we're gonna start off with our own butterscotch sauce base, which you can make in advance and then keep it for whenever you need a little coffee fix. This is all you need to do first. All you need to do is add your sugar into a pan along with your water and swell until your sugar has dissolved. Bring this up to the boil, being careful not to over stir it, otherwise too many sugar crystals will form and you'll have a grainy sauce. After about five to seven minutes, it should be bubbling rapidly and be a lovely dark golden brown. You can then add in your cubes of cold butter. Slowly stir this in until the butter has melted and then allow it to boil again. Slowly pour in your double cream and then continue mixing. Be careful as this bubbles away as it will be very hot. You should start to notice the butterscotch sauce thicken up now so you can flavour it with your vanilla and some salt. You want to allow this to bubble up for another two minutes, but keep a close eye on it. If you start to see super dark patches on the bottom or puffs of smoke, this is a sign that your butterscotch sauce could be burning, so remove it from the heat immediately. Once it's a lovely golden color, you want to remove it from the pan and transfer it into a glass jar, allowing it to cool completely before using. If you're storing your butterscotch sauce in an airtight jar, you can keep it in the fridge for around two to three weeks, which means you don't need to use it all in this coffee recipe. You can save it and try a whole host of our Harry Potter recipes, including butterbeer porridge, butterbeer ice cream, and our iconic butterbeer milkshakes from the Chamber of Secrets. Again, check out the playlist if you want to catch up on any of those. Of course, today is all about the Frappuccino. So let's show Starbucks what we're made of. Making your homemade butterbeer frappuccino recipe is super easy as well. I'm gonna start off making my espresso. If you don't have a coffee machine, you can just use some fine coffee powder and some hot water. Then all that's left to do is place your ingredients into your blender. That's ice, milk, the coffee, your butterscotch sauce, vanilla syrup for an added sweetness and flavor, Place your lid on top and then I'm going to blitz that together for about 30 seconds to a minute until it's lovely and smooth. Have a quick check and then if you want your frappuccino to be thicker, add in some extra ice. Or if you prefer it thinner, you can add in some extra milk. 
I get a lot of comments about making these recipes vegan friendly and this is one that is easy to transform. In the butterscot sauce you can switch out the butter and cream for vegan alternatives. You just want to change the quantity slightly and use less cream because vegan cream doesn't thicken it up as much. And then for the main drink you can swap out that milk for any non-dairy substitute. Coconut milk works so so well in this recipe so that's what I'd recommend but feel free to experiment if you like. Before serving, I'm going to decorate the inside of my cups with some more butterscotch sauce. All you need to do is pop these into a bottle with a nozzle on the end and then squeeze that along the side of your cups. Quickly pour the frappuccino mix inside and leave about a centimetre gap at the top. If you've had a Starbucks frappuccino before, you'll know it needs the whipped cream and extra sauce on top. Squirt your whipped cream high and then drizzle some extra butterscotch sauce over that. I could happily dive head first into these butterbeer frappuccinos, but if you want to be classy, you can use some paper straws instead. And with that, our Harry Potter homemade butterbeer frappuccinos are complete. If you've ever wondered what a wizard would order from Starbucks, now you know. If you're a fan of Starbucks Frappuccinos and all things Wizarding World, then you definitely need to give this Butterbeer Frappuccino a go. Let me know down below in the comments what you think if you do. That's all for this week's recipe, but if you want to see more from my Harry Potter kitchen, then make sure you hit that subscribe button and click on the notification bell so you get an alert next Monday when there's a brand new recipe. I am very awake after all this caffeine, so I'm going to head on to next week's recipe right now. See you there.